This video is going to talk about how we can use prime factorization. We should have our page ready to go. Make sure the date is at the top. And the topic is using prime factorization. Today's essential question is, can we use prime factorization to help us find the least common multiple and or the greatest common factor? When we covered least common multiple and greatest common factor, some of you asked if there were more efficient ways that we could use to find these values. Well, there is, and it has to do with prime factorization. So let's see if we can find out how it works. First, let's find the prime numbers that make the following numbers. I want to find the prime factorization of 24 and 60, and I'm going to use that information to help me find both the lowest common multiple and the greatest common factor. So go ahead and pause the video and find the prime factorization for both 24 and for 60. How'd you do? I have both of my prime factorizations listed below my factor trees. I'm going to now use a Venn diagram to show some of this information. I want to look at the factors, the prime factors that both of these numbers have, and I'm going to organize it in my Venn diagram. I'll put numbers that are just factors of 24 on the left-hand side, numbers that are just factors of 60 on the right-hand side, and let's see, I'll use purple here to show the combination. The numbers that they share, the factors they share, will go in the middle. So if I look at this, 2 shows up on both lists, so I'm going to put a 2 in the middle. Okay. There's another 2 here, I'm going to say that I'm done with that one. There's another 2 on the list of 24's prime factors, and there's another 2 here on 60, so I'm going to put that 2 in the middle as well. But now I see that there is a third 2, this 2 here. There's a 2 on 24's list, but there's not an extra 2 over here that matches with it on the 60. It's not shared with the 60, so I'm going to put it just on the side of the 24. I'm done with that one. Now I see a 3 here, and I also see that there's a matching 3 on the 60's factorization, so I'm going to put that also in the middle, and I'll say I'm done with those. I've taken care of all of my factors of 24. Let me look at the factors of 60. I've done the 2, the 3, and the other 2, but there's a 5 over here, and this 5 is just a factor of 60. It is not a factor of 24, so I'm going to put it on the right-hand side. Well, that's great, right? I have it organized, but what does I, what was that for, right? What do I do with that? Well, here's how we can use it. If I want to find the greatest common factor, right, the factors that they share, I can look here, look up into this section that they share, okay, and see what they have in common. They have a 2 times 2 times 3 in common. Right? Well, 2 times 2 is 4, times 3 is 12. Their greatest common factor is 12. And I was able to find that without even having to make any lists, right? I was just able to look at what they shared in this Venn diagram. If I want to find the least common multiple, I can look from left to right. right? The least common multiple I can find by looking from left to right, and I remember that because it starts with an L, just like left to right. So I can look across from left to right and I see 2 and then I see the 2 times 2 times 3 that's in the middle there. And I also see a 5. If I multiply those all together, 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 5, I get 120. And that's their least common multiple. That was much faster, wasn't it? Try one on your own. Let's use prime factorization and a Venn diagram to find the least common multiple and greatest common factor of 12 and 30. 
So go ahead and set up your factor trees, find your prime factorization, and then check in, and we'll make sure we have the same answer before we use it in our Venn diagram. How'd you do with that first part? Did you find the prime factorizations of both 12 and 30? Now, take a moment and fill in a Venn diagram with the factors of 12 on one side and 30 on the other, and any that they share can go in the middle. With our Venn diagram in place, we can find the greatest common factor by looking in the middle. Right? 2 times 3 is 6. That is their greatest common factor. I can also find their least common multiple by looking from left to right. 2 times 2 times 3 times 5. Their least common multiple is 60. And there you have it. This might be a faster way for many of us to find the least common multiple um, or the greatest common factor, especially when we're working with really large numbers or numbers we're not as familiar with. So remember, our essential question for today was, can we use prime factorization to help us find the least common multiple and the greatest common factor? And I think we can. I think we did that. We'll practice this a little bit in class together.